So you might be asking yourself, who is this girl and why is she giving me advice? Well, my new friend, let me take a moment and introduce myself to you. I, like so many of us, had a really difficult, challenging childhood. The type of childhood that left me wondering if I was lovable, if I was good enough, what will my life be like, how will I be in relationships, will I recognize love, how will I be as a mom, how will I treat myself when I'm older, what kind of relationships will I allow into my life as I grow. I always looked at life on a deeper level. I always felt a little bit different. And I also really found it to be soul level important for me to make sure that the people around me felt loved and that they mattered and that they were included. And eventually one day I realized that I needed to include myself in those values So I've been on this journey where I've been collecting inspiration through ideas and through material that I've learned and through experiences that I've had and through every person that I've ever worked with on my journey or every friend who shared their story with me. And I realized that there's a part of me that's an educator that wants to share this information, that wants to share my experience and my knowledge that I've obtained throughout my life and spending my life just studying relationships and practicing the skills and tweaking them to make them even work for me even better. And on my journey, I went from being somebody who didn't know if I was lovable, if I could ever really be loved, if I was enough. I was an extreme people pleaser. I was codependent. And now in my late 30s, I am an empowered woman. I am assertive. I do not settle for relationships that are good enough. They need to be incredible to stay in my life. I have broken the cycle and I have an incredible marriage. And I have a son that I absolutely adore and feel beyond grateful that I get to be his mom. So I wanted to create this podcast for you, dear listener, because maybe some of the things that I've experienced or I've learned on my journey is something that you can apply to yours, or you can tweak it and make it your own to fit your journey so that you can allow yourself and give space for yourself to grow and become who you've always wanted to be, who you're meant to be on that soul level. So not only do I have my own life experiences, I have also spent my life working in the behavioral health field, in the mental health field, and I've also made sure that I have the credentials and the education to fully understand, and I continue to take trainings every year to make sure that I am up to date and that I am continuing to learn and practice the skills that are really truly going to help me create the best relationships that I possibly can have in my life, including and especially the relationship with myself. Through my journey, I learned that the most important relationship I'll ever have is the relationship with me, and I need to start there. And then it just ripples out and influences every other relationship that I have. So I do have a bachelor's in health and human development, a master's in marriage and family therapy. I also have an associate's degree as a wellness practitioner, which means that I also am a certified hypnotist. I'm a certified family life educator. I've studied holistic nutrition and also life coaching. So I've really spent my time studying this area so that I can tie in the research-based skills with the experiences that life has given me as well so that I can deliver you experts and resources and awesome conversation that will hopefully give you some things to think about and maybe shift your perspective or try out for yourself and see what you like and throw away what you don't and Anyway, I'm just so honored that you're here to share a piece of your journey with me. And again, I hope that 
part of my journey can positively influence yours. Welcome to the Beautifully Changed Podcast. I'm Steph Perehamas, and I'm delighted you're here. Now, let's make your relationships awesome. Hey there, I am doing a 12 easy weeks to powerful and blissful self-love personal growth challenge and it is completely free for you so you can find the weeks on my youtube channel or on my website at beautifullychanged.com slash self-love and it will bring you to all of the weeks you can get caught up but today i wanted to share with you week five and week five is all about creating a collection of the compliments you've received and evidence of the confidence that you do have and when it shows up. And so I just want to give you a couple things to think about around that. And then this episode will end with a guided imagery. So if you're going to listen to the guided imagery part, make sure you are not driving or operating any heavy machinery while you listen to the guided imagery and that you're able to you know, take some time for yourself to close your eyes and just tune in to the imagery. So the visualization. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy this episode and get something out of it. Sending big love to you. Here we go. Hello, hotcakes. We are on to week five. And so what we're going to do this week is a lot about identifying when we feel confident and learning to really accept compliments because let me know if you can relate when someone gives you a compliment it's like oh god well thanks but you know it's no big deal or you know i just got lucky or something right we try to like explain away the compliment like someone gives us a compliment and we're like pow get that away from me i need to deflect the compliment or say why i shouldn't deserve that compliment So this week, we're going to talk about saying thank you and receiving that compliment in and like holding it in and feeling good. So plus confidence. It's important that we identify our confidence and that we do have it within us at times and so that we can tap into it more. Okay, so the first thing this week is to practice saying thank you when someone gives you a compliment and stop yourself from explaining it away. So when someone gives you a compliment, simply say, thank you. And then you're gonna move on to part two, which is writing down the compliment. So anytime you receive a compliment, keep like a little compliment journal and go ahead and write down every compliment that you receive. And if you're feeling extra interested in this, go ahead and think about all the compliments you've received throughout your whole life and write them down. This might take you a while or Perhaps you're someone who's like, I've never even received a compliment before. In that case, to be completely honest, you're probably not paying attention. Or maybe in those moments, you're just feeling down or more in that like victim-y type role or just not aware that other people are saying good things. Like maybe that self-talk in your head is so loud and negative that it's drowning out the goodness that people are trying to give you through their words and through how they see you, right? Or you're just so good at blocking them out, right? That you don't even realize when they're coming because your mind like hears a compliment and it's like swats it away before you even get a chance to take it in. So this week, just practicing thank you. And then write down every compliment you've ever received, even if you can only think of one. And if you can think of more than one, then I want you to go through and highlight the compliments that meant the most to you. Because maybe that means it helps you identify what your values are or what, you know, whatever it is, how you want to see yourself and other people are recognizing in that in you. So that feels really good. Just highlight the compliments that mean the most. And then also give yourself some compliments. Like if you took off like this humble hat or the criticism hat or the self-doubt hat and you were just to see yourself with eyes of love, what would that look like? What would you say to yourself? What would you compliment about the way you're showing up in the world, the way you're showing up for yourself, other people in your life, whatever it is, what would you compliment about you? And go ahead and write those down. And then you'll have a beautiful compliment collection 
that you can go to whenever you just want a little boost of love and to also just practice receiving the compliments, right? Because if somebody is giving you a compliment, they're saying something they see in you. And so just as we can't tell someone that their feelings are wrong, why are we telling them that their compliments are wrong, right? Just accept the compliment, say thank you, and then carry on. The third thing to do this week is to start, don't mind the yard work in the background, number three, you're going to start a journal that's evidence of your confidence. And so what that means is I want you to start journaling the times when you notice that your confidence showed up for you. So if this meant that you were able to stand up for yourself or you were able to share an idea or you were able to do something that you wanted to do but you were scared to do, you tried something new, you went and bought a shirt without getting everyone else's opinion on the shirt, you know, you asked for something you needed, you asked for something to stop, whatever it is, you, whenever you notice that this little confident spark in you kind of glittered and showed up, write that down, especially if you are someone who is struggling with confidence and you have a lot of self-doubt or negative talk going on, or it seems to be a little bit, uh, it shows up a little bit more often. So we wanna start swapping that. We want the self-doubt to go down and the confidence to go up. And so start tracking your evidence of when confidence does show up. And then what I'd like you to do is like after you got quite a few you know, times written down that you have this evidence of confidence and you know that it's real and you know you can, you know, experience this, then I want you to be able to tap into it anytime you need it. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down all your confidence stories, right? And then you go ahead and you read through them. And if you want to, you can close your eyes and bring yourself to those places where your confidence felt really amazing. And then when you're at the peak of that feel good, I want you to anchor it in. However, you're gonna anchor it in somewhere that you don't touch all the time. So it could be behind your ear, it could be like your wrist bone, it could be behind your knee, your elbow, wherever it is, somewhere that you can touch the same way every time and you can remember how you do it and where it is, right? So for me, a lot of times when I do this, it's like I'll do my anchor is my little wrist bone right here. And so what you're gonna do, again, like I said, Read all of your things, imagine yourself take you to that place, imagine your confidence just being whoosh, right? Like you're like, I am superwoman, right? So go ahead and have your confidence just at its peak and then close your eyes, anchor it in, or keep your eyes open, whatever feels better for you, but then just anchor it in. And then that way, when you have something where you're notice like, oh my gosh, all this self-doubt's coming up, I'm not feeling very confident, you can just touch that anchor and you'll get a boost of that confidence that's stored within you because your body can recognize it because it knows it's something you already have, okay? So really, really, really write it. Don't be shy. Don't be shy about the times you're confident, okay? Let it flow. And then number four is to start releasing that self-criticism. And so, Whenever something happens within your day and that self-criticism starts to happen or the negative talk or just focusing on the things that don't feel good or focusing on what you don't have yet, I want you to stop, call a timeout, and rethink something else. So just stop that thought and say, you know what? I'm going to find a thought that feels better than the thought I was just having, right? This is a little Abraham Hicks stuff, right? So you're definitely going to say, whoa, okay, I'm finding a thought that feels better than this thought instead of a thought that feels worse, right? You don't want to go down the worst thought path. You want to go down the feel good thought path. So literally just start thinking of thoughts that feel better and it'll continue to take you in that direction, right? So that is what I'm going to challenge you with today. So have so much fun, like find the fun in it, put on good music, you know, wear a fun outfit that feels really good when you wear it, get whatever you want to do that feels awesome. 
and then start your compliment collection, find the evidence of your confidence, and then find the thoughts that feel better instead of worse. You'll also find a breathing exercise to go with this week, a guided imagery, and continue your mirror work. A couple minutes a day, looking in the mirror, ask yourself what you need, tell yourself some things you're good, that you're proud of, tell yourself about the compliments you like to receive, and have an incredible week. And if you have some progress you wanna share, go ahead and do so in the comments. If you have questions or challenges you wanna share as well, also feel free to do that. In the comments and I will get back to you. Have an incredible week. Remember that you matter. You're enough right now. Like right now, you are enough and I'm sending so much love your way. Keep being incredible because the world needs you. In this guided imagery, we are going to turn down the negative self-talk, the criticism, the destructive criticism that is happening in your mind and you are going to turn up the positivity. When you're ready, go ahead and get in a nice and comfortable position. And go ahead and close your eyes and just notice your breath. Have a moment of gratitude for the breath and, and how it fuels your day and your cells. And as you're breathing, just notice how all the stress is releasing from your body with each exhale. And you're feeling more calm and more peaceful. And you're able to just relax and be present in this moment. Putting your to-do list on the side, you can go back to it later. Letting all worries be free from you at this moment. You can worry again later if you so choose. Right now, it's just you and your breath and my voice. And I am here to support you and send you love and to cheer you on and to guide you. Now imagine yourself walking down a path. It's a beautiful walking path filled with trees and wildflowers. Perhaps there's a breeze. Maybe it's a cloudy day or the sun is out. Or perhaps you're walking under the stars. Whatever you decide is just fine. And as you walk down this path, you notice this building in front of you. As you walk closer, you notice that it has your name on this building. So you decide to walk in. And as you enter this building, you notice that it's your self-talk factory. It helps you produce the things that you say about yourself in your mind or out loud. And you notice that all over the walls are lovers. And this is quite curious. You notice that some are turned way up and some are completely down. So you walk up to a wall and you notice that this wall is for negative self-talk, for criticism, for self-doubt. And you notice that all the lovers are turned quite high. And you make a decision, you check in with yourself. Are you ready to make this change? Are you ready to stop the negative criticism, the destructive criticism, the tearing yourself down, the beating yourself up? Are you ready to make this change? And with that, yes, you go up to the first lover. And you notice above it, you say the words, you're not good enough. And it's turned way up. And you reach your hand and you grab that lever. 
and you turn it off and you bring it all the way down and as you turn it down pull it down you can no longer see those words they blurt out and then you walk up to the next lever and it says you'll never accomplish anything and you notice where this is at and you decide to turn this lever down pull it down so you can turn it off and as you do the words blur and you continue to the next lever and it says you're not smart enough and you go ahead and you take this lever and you pull it down, you turn it down until it goes all the way off and the words blur and you are free from them and you continue down as many levers as you need to noticing that the words above the lever disappear they blur out as you pull the lever down and turn those words off so take your time and do as many as you need to very well now it's time to turn some incredible uplifting words on so you walk over to the other wall and you notice a lot of the words on this wall you can't quite read clearly they're a little bit blurry and as you notice the lovers they're all down really low some are a little bit higher than others and others are completely off and you ask yourself, are you ready to turn on the positive self-talk and to step into your life with more confidence? And with that yes, you step forward to the first lover. And this one is very blurry, you can hardly read it. So you turn the lever up a little bit, you push it up. And you begin to see the words, you are enough, always, including right now. And you push that baby all the way up. You turn that lever all the way on. And as you do that, you feel a jolt of just good, positive energy go through you. And this feels thrilling. Your mind is excited to experience this new way of thinking this new way of talking about yourself so you eagerly go to the next lever and this one says you're smart enough and you go ahead and you push that lever all the way up until those words are bright and strong and solid and you can hear them in your mind now and you go to the next lever and it says you are lovable and you push that lever all the way up and those words you are lovable get bigger and louder and stronger and they feel right they're true this feels really good and you move to the next lever and it says you can do hard things because those hard things are actually easy for you it's a long sentence and it's true so you go ahead and you push that lever up and those words become so bright and loud and strong and you feel yourself standing taller and straighter with your head up and this feels incredible 
and you walk to the next lever. And this one says, you are worthy of all of your dreams, all of your goals. Success is yours to have. And you go ahead and you take a breath and you push that lever up. You turn those words all the way on and this feels incredible. It feels so good to see yourself for who you really are, to remember who you are and your worth. And with this, you notice there's a few more levers on this wall and you go ahead one by one, turning those words on, turning them all the way up, pushing that lever to the top until those words are big and bold and loud and you can hear them to the soul. So go ahead and take your time and notice what the words say as they light up, as they become bigger and brighter and bolder. Take as much time as you need here, continuing to breathe and letting the excitement soak in and lead you. Very well, when you're ready, you take one last look, making sure you're satisfied with the placement of the lovers. And you walk out the door, you walk out filled with confidence and self-love and knowing that you are incredible and capable and you remember who you are. And you walk back down that path bringing your most confident self with you and this feels good you even notice that the world looks brighter and more loving and happier and you vibrate with incredible self-love and a knowing that you matter and you are worthy just let this soak into you take it all in and you return back to your breath knowing that you've left that old critical thinking in the past, you've turned it off and you've turned up the positive words you need to hear and it's okay if you need to hear them often throughout the day, they're there for you that's what they're meant to do, they're meant to uplift you and you gladly use them to do such work And as you return your focus back to your breath, you notice how freely it flows in and out of you and how good you feel. And whenever you're ready, you go ahead and open your eyes and return to your day. Knowing that this new you uplifts yourself and loves and accepts yourself completely. Very well. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today and make sure to share this episode with someone and leave a review. And remember, you're worthy of incredible love.